I'm in Esbjerg, Denmark, and this is the world's first giant heat pump to serve as a central heating system and provide warmth through pipes to an entire city. This is the story of seawater heat pumps and the future they promise. A future where warmth no longer comes from burning, but from drawing quiet energy hidden in the depths. In Denmark, this idea has grown into something vast enough to keep two cities alive through winter, powered not by fire, but by the sea. It feels almost like a secret that cold water can still hold heat, waiting to be released. Yet behind this promise lies a question. How much can we take, and for how long, before nature begins to answer back? The principle of heat from water. A heat pump sounds complicated, but at its heart it is simple. It takes warmth from somewhere outside, a place that often feels too cold to hold energy, and makes it strong enough to heat homes. Even water pulled from the sea or a river, chilled by winter air, still carries a quiet reserve of heat. The pump captures this invisible resource and passes it through a cycle that changes it into usable warmth. Think of it as a chain reaction. Cold water gives up a little heat. A special fluid inside the pump absorbs it and transforms. Pressure rises, temperature climbs, and suddenly that faint trace of warmth becomes something powerful. What once seemed useless becomes the comfort of a heated room. This is the beauty of the design. It doesn't need fire, coal, or gas. It needs only the hidden energy that is already there, waiting in the air, earth, or water. A gentle borrowing, multiplied through clever engineering, becomes enough to warm thousands of lives. Small pumps, big problems. In many places, heat pumps are already part of daily life. They sit outside houses, humming quietly as they pull warmth from the air or ground. For a single family, this can work well. The pump delivers steady comfort without smoke or flames, and it often uses far less electricity than people expect. But the picture changes when you look at cities. Streets are crowded, walls are close together, and space for machines is rare. A single pump may fit in a backyard, but thousands of them competing for space become a problem. Noise can spread from the fans, Neighbors can complain, and strict rules decide how close a pump can sit to the next home. The cost is another weight. Installing one pump for every household means repeating the same effort again and again. Each system works alone, even though the need is shared. In the end, families gain warmth, but at the price of separation, each house solving its problem instead of being part of something larger. The promise of district heating. There is another way to think about warmth. Instead of thousands of pumps working alone, one powerful system can serve an entire neighborhood. This is the idea of district heating. A central plant gathers energy and sends it out through underground pipes, carrying hot water to each home. Inside, Families only need radiators or floor heating to feel comfortable. The strength of this approach lies in unity. A single source can be cleaner, quieter, and easier to manage than countless scattered machines. It means fewer walls cluttered with equipment, less noise outside windows, and fewer worries about maintenance for each household. Some countries already show how far this can go. In Denmark, most homes are connected to district heating, and much of that heat now comes from renewable sources. In Germany, the share is still small, and most networks rely on gas or coal. Yet the path forward is clear. If heating is to leave fossil fuels behind, large shared systems may become the backbone of that transition. How a giant heat pump breathes. A large heat pump is more than a machine. It almost feels alive, as if it inhales the sea and exhales warmth for a city. The process begins with the first circuit, 
where water is drawn in. Even when it feels cold, this water carries hidden energy. The pump captures it, just a few degrees at a time. The second circuit is where the magic happens. Instead of water, it holds a fluid that changes quickly into a gas. As it absorbs the faint heat, it transforms and rises. The gas is then squeezed tightly inside a compressor. With every increase in pressure, the temperature climbs until the once gentle warmth becomes hot enough to heat thousands of homes. From there, the third circuit takes over. Pipes carry water that will travel into the city. The gas releases its heat into this water, which then flows out into the district network. The cycle repeats endlessly. Water, fluid, gas, pressure, heat. It is quiet, almost invisible. Yet in its silence, the pump turns something fragile into strength. A few lost degrees from the sea become the comfort of families gathered indoors on the coldest days. Germany's Steps Toward Scale Germany has begun to explore this path, though the journey is still young. In Stuttgart, a large heat pump already works beside a waste-burning plant. It draws on cooling water that would otherwise be released unused, turning it into steady heat for thousands of households. The numbers sound impressive, yet the reality is more complex. Demand rises and falls with the seasons. What seems vast in theory can feel smaller when winter truly arrives. In Mannheim, another system taps into river water. It provides a similar amount of energy, again enough to supply many homes. Projects like these show what is possible, but they are still only pieces of a larger puzzle. Germany's heating network remains tied mostly to gas and coal, and renewable projects are scattered rather than widespread. The ambition is clear, to replace fossil heat with clean sources that can be scaled up for entire cities. Yet ambition alone does not change streets or households overnight. Each plant is a step, sometimes slow, but everyone moves the country closer to an energy future shaped less by fire and more by hidden warmth. Denmark's seawater giant. On the coast of Denmark, a different kind of plant has begun to change the story. In the city of Esbjerg, the world's largest seawater heat pump now pulls energy from the North Sea. Its scale is difficult to picture. The system draws in thousands of liters of seawater every second, cooling it only slightly yet enough to release an enormous flow of heat. With a capacity of 70 megawatts, it provides energy equal to hundreds of smaller household pumps combined. What makes this project stand out even more is its choice of refrigerant. Instead of the harmful gases often used in older systems, it relies on carbon dioxide. At first, that might sound strange, CO2 is the very gas most linked with climate change. But in this role, it is safer, cleaner, and far less damaging if it escapes. This makes the plant both efficient and protective of the fragile ecosystem around it, a place recognized as a World Heritage Site. The result is not only a technical achievement, but also a symbol. The sea itself, once seen only as endless water, now becomes a quiet partner in keeping cities alive with warmth, season after season. Germany's upcoming projects. Germany has watched Denmark's success closely and is preparing its large seawater systems. One of the most important projects is planned in Flensburg, a city on the fjord. By 2027, a powerful seawater heat pump will stand on the waterfront. When it begins, it should cover about one-fifth of the city's heating needs. That is the same as replacing several thousand household pumps with a single shared machine. Another project is rising in Cologne. Instead of the sea, it will use the steady current of the Rhine. This river water heat pump is designed to be even larger, 
delivering enough energy to supply tens of thousands of homes. It could become one of the biggest systems of its kind in Europe. Each of these plants points to the same idea. Individual solutions can be replaced by one central source, stronger and cleaner. Instead of many small hums scattered across backyards, a single heartbeat of warmth can reach entire neighborhoods at once. The Hidden Challenges The dream of drawing warmth from water is powerful, yet it comes with limits that cannot be ignored. Large seawater heat pumps cannot operate in every season. When the sea turns too cold, the systems may fall silent for days. Strangely, this often happens in the very moments when heat is needed most. In those times, backup systems, sometimes still powered by gas, must take over. It is a reminder that even the most advanced designs cannot yet escape nature's rules. Beneath the streets lies another barrier. These pumps can only serve cities that already have district heating networks. Without pipes to carry the warmth, even the strongest machine would stand idle. Building those connections is costly and slow, and approval processes often drag on for years. Families, too, worry about the price. District heating does not always mirror market changes quickly, leaving households tied to contracts that can feel heavy when fuel costs fall elsewhere. For cities away from the coast, rivers become the alternative. The effect is gentle. Water returns only slightly cooler, a shift so small it hardly disturbs the flow of life within. Some imagine this cooling as a gift against warming summers, but the truth is quieter. The change is too small to reverse climate shifts. In the end, whether drawn from the sea or the river, the promise is the same. Warmth without fire, shared through a common network. The challenge lies not in the source itself, but in the will to build the systems that let this hidden energy reach every home. The rise of giant heat pumps shows us a future that feels both familiar and new. For centuries, warmth came from fire, wood, coal, and gas. Now, the same comfort is drawn quietly from water and air. It is a shift almost invisible yet powerful enough to change whole cities. The sea gives, the river gives, even the air gives. Each holds a hidden current of energy waiting to be found. But the question remains, will we build the networks, face the costs, and trust in this quieter path? The answer may decide how gently we step into a future without fire.